In this tutorial, I wanna show you how you can automate stops in Ableton Live so that at the end of one song, it will automatically stop before it goes into the next song. Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. On the channel, every single day at 10 a.m. Central, I post a brand new tutorial showing you how to run tracks like a pro with Ableton Live. If you're interested in that, then please hit subscribe and enable the bell icon. Now, one of my favorite features of running tracks in Ableton Live's arrangement view is to set it up so that I can go immediately from one song into the next. It's a great feature, but from time to time, you need the ability to stop and you want it to stop automatically. I'm gonna show you how to set that up from scratch in this tutorial. Now, if you're on a Windows PC, you're going to want to use loop be1 as the solution for you click the link in the description of this video to see my free walkthrough and tutorial on setting that up on a windows pc if you're on a mac you're going to want to use the iac driver it's built into every mac we're going to walk through in this tutorial how to set that up uh, but if you're on a windows pc check out the loop be1 tutorial on mac then just follow along with me here once you're done we're all going to meet up in the middle and pick back up where we left off so over on mac let's go to audio midi setup the easiest way I found to get there is to use Spotlight and to search for Audio MIDI Setup. When you get here, go up to Window in the menu bar, and we want to click Show MIDI Studio. Now, once that loads, you want to look for something called the IAC driver. This is a free utility built into every Mac that allows you to route MIDI from one program on your Mac to another program on your Mac. Same thing for Loop you one on a Windows PC. It's a virtual MIDI routing uh, program that allows us to route MIDI from one program to another program on the same computer. But we're actually gonna use this in kind of a hacky way, and not hacky in a bad sense, but in a way that was maybe not intended to be used. We're gonna use this to send MIDI out of Ableton Live and then back into Ableton Live. You'll see what I'm talking about in just a second. So I'm gonna double click on IEC driver here. Uh, I wanna make sure that my device is online. Okay, so I've enabled that. I would just leave the name IEC driver if, if I was you personally. Then we could go to our buses here. We could add as many ports and buses as we need. In our scenario, we just need at least one. So I'm just gonna leave this set to one bus, okay? Now let's go into Ableton's preferences. Uh, again, if you're on a Windows PC using Loop B1, come back, meet me right here in the middle and let's finish this process. Uh, we're gonna go into preferences and live, which is command comma. We wanna go to the link tempo MIDI tab. Now what we're looking for here is the IEC driver if we're on a Mac to show up, if you're on a Windows PC, Loop BE1, whatever you set up, we're gonna look for that in the menu here. And first let's start on the input side of this. Now I'm looking, okay, right here at the top, IEC driver bus one. I wanna make sure the only one of these that's enabled is remote. Essentially that means I can remotely control live from the IEC driver. It's gonna be super important here in a second. Next, we wanna look on the output side of this, look for the IEC driver in enable track. Okay. That means we're going to be able to send MIDI from Ableton Live's tracks to the IEC driver, receive it, and send it back into Ableton Live. Again, as a reminder, if you're on Loop BE1, uh, make sure that you have enabled that and set that up uh, properly the same way. Uh, and with that set up, we're ready to dive into Ableton Live to create what I call a stop track. Now, before I do that, before I show you this hack that's gonna save you so much time and, and give you so much flexibility on stage to just stay focused in the moment and not get off track, I wanna encourage you to consider subscribing. Hit the subscribe button, enable the bell icon. Every single day on the channel, every day, I don't sleep, 10 a.m. Central, I post a brand new tutorial showing you how to use Ableton Live on a stage, on a stage like a pro to run tracks, to um, uh, do anything, perform on stage with Ableton Live. If you're interested in that sort of content, subscribe and enable the bell icon. Okay, so we're back into Ableton Live. We're gonna create what I call a stop track. I'm gonna go up to the create menu here and I'm going to insert a MIDI track, okay? So I've got that inserted. I'm gonna name this stop track. So I'm gonna do Command R or Control R if I'm on a PC. And we're going to name that stop. Now I need to go to the MIDI output here and I need to send this to my IEC driver. I could choose multiple different um, uh, channels, but in my case, I'm just gonna leave this set to channel one. Now, let's go ahead and create a MIDI clip. So I'm gonna just select uh, about a measure's worth of space here, and I'm gonna use our uh, Create MIDI Clip shortcut, which is Command-Shift-M, again, say that three times fast, uh, to create my MIDI shortcut, uh, MIDI clip there. And now I need to just pick a MIDI note. I, I could pick any MIDI note that I want to. Um, I'm just gonna select the lowest possible note in live. So I'm gonna scroll all the way to the bottom here, C minus two, I'm gonna double click. And this is just a will dog at personal preference. I'm gonna to click to drag to make this the entire uh, length of the clip. That way when I look at this, it doesn't feel like something is wrong, okay? So there is our MIDI note. 
Now I need to assign this MIDI note to the stop button in Ableton Live. So here's how we do this, really, really simple. Uh, I'm going to go into MIDI assign mode in Live. We're gonna click that. I'm gonna just jump back a measure or two in our playback here. And I wanna go up and click on the stop button. Now I already had something assigned, so I'm gonna click this, okay? And that's going to assign to my stop button, One, all right? Two. And you can hear Live starting to go over to my next song. So now with this assigned, essentially what I'm doing is I've got that MIDI clip that's sending MIDI out of Ableton Live to the IEC driver or loop BE1 in the case of Windows, and then it's receiving it back into Ableton Live so that whenever it hits that clip, Live is going to stop. Here's how we're gonna program our set. I'm gonna go to the end of my song, we'll leave this clip here. I'm gonna copy this. Let's go to the end of uh, song two. Let's put this right here so that it stops. And let's try this out with uh, these two songs, okay? Get to the end. Boom, we stopped, that's perfect. That's exactly what I wanted to do. It's not like a big wow effect, but if you've ever used live on stage for tracks and you've had to remember to stop after every song, this is, gosh, it's a huge, huge time saver. Now we'll go to the end here again and watch when we get to the end of this song and we're gonna hit stop, okay? So live is gonna automatically stop every time we do that, which is really great. But what about a scenario where uh, you've got a MIDI controller? I've got my Oak board, um, mini here uh, from Oaktone set up. I've got a stop button on this and I want to continue to use my MIDI controller with live, but I also wanna use a stop track. How do we make that happen? So let's go back into live. Uh, I'm gonna leave my clip where it is for now, but we may come back and replace this. And I'm gonna go back into MIDI assign mode. Command M is my shortcut for that. And I've got my Oakboard slide uh, or my Oakboard mini here set up, ready to go. Uh, I'm gonna just map stop to Ableton Live, okay? So we're gonna click the stop button. I'm gonna click stop on my controller and uh, we'll see that this is mapped. So you can see at the stop button there, that's mapped. Next thing I need to do is see what the heck message I just sent and really important, what MIDI channel it's on, okay? So let's go over here to Live's browser. We're gonna click this button, and when we're in MIDI mapping mode, it's actually our mappings browser. So you can see our stop button from our Oakboard Mini is actually sending on MIDI channel 16, and it's note D1. Now in order to make this happen, I need to create a clip that matches the same exact MIDI channel and the same exact MIDI note. Now you may be watching this and, and go, well, Will, um, my MIDI controller is sending CC information instead of uh, a MIDI note. Well then create the CC information to perfectly match the MIDI channel CC data for your controller. Whatever it is, whatever it's sending information, the clip needs to match it exactly. So in my case, let's, let's actually do that. So we're looking for MIDI channel 16 note D1. First thing I'm gonna to do to my stop track, change this from channel one to channel 16, again, because it has to match exactly. And then we wanna change our clip to be note D1. So let's go to our first one here that we added in. Let's scroll all the way back, there we go. We'll double click. I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna move this to D1. So there's D minus two. I'm gonna click it, I'm gonna hold shift and arrow up uh, to jump up to the note really quickly. Um, one pro tip, not even necessarily pro tip, but pro mistake, a mistake that I've seen people make all the time. Um, the note I'm looking for is D1. A lot of times I'll look at this like I have right here and go, oh, it's uh, it's right, it's D1, right? No, it's actually D minus one. I need to keep going to go up to D1. So I'll keep holding shift, there we go, D0, D1. Now, I'm not the smartest guy around, so I always double check my work before I do this. So command M uh, to get into MIDI assign mode. I'm looking for D1, channel 16. Uh, just double check, stop is note D1, channel 16. Okay, great. So now this is set up, let's try it again. All right, we're gonna get here, we're gonna stop. Again, doesn't seem incredibly powerful, but let's go to our MIDI controller now. I'm gonna just jump back a little bit in Live's transport, and I'm gonna press stop here in just a second, okay? So let's press play in Live, I'm gonna press stop on my MIDI controller, and it stopped. So I'm able to press stop here, and it's gonna stop, and I'm also able to leave it going and let it keep running and have it stop here as well. So if you're using a MIDI controller, uh, assign your MIDI controller first. And then the second thing is create a stop track that perfectly mirrors the uh, MIDI note or MIDI CC that your controller is sending. And most importantly, the MIDI channel that your controller is sending. Now your next possible question is, okay, well, this is great. I love that at the end of this song, it automatically stopped. But is there a way to have this set up so that it stops and let's say automatically selects our next song so that all we have to do is press spacebar to set up uh, and to start our next song. 
Well, that is possible. And if you click the link in the description of this video or click the card on this video, I'll show you exactly how to set that up and exactly how to make that happen. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you on the next one. Take care, everybody. Bye.